my name is Christine Glover and I'm a USA Today best-selling author but I wasn't always one as you know by now and I found a cute way to talk to you today about my author origin story via an author tag on AuthorTube by Evie Dreyer. So I'm going to drop a link to her YouTube channel in the description and you can check her out as well and in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and answer the questions that she has for authors to describe your writing history, your writing journey. It's all done like superheroes which I really love. So the first question she asks is backstory. Um, when and why did you start writing and how old were you in and which genres? So I was a writer pretty much from the time I could write. I wrote a lot of fan fiction before fan fiction I think was a thing. I was an avid reader so I between reading and just making up my own stories either in my head or uh, one time I had a crush on a celebrity and I wrote a fan fiction on a sh based on the show that he was in. So you know I've been at this for a long time. Originally uh, in my teens I wrote a lot of angsty poetry and stuff like that. I thought about going into like more thriller kind of stuff and then I didn't and then I went to a class in my 20s that said oh you should you know pick a genre don't try to write the great American novel pick something you like reading and I'm like well I love reading romances so I'll write romance ha 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 uh, they're not as easy to write as people think but I wrote my first book I started it right before I had a baby and then I put it aside and focused on being a mom and a wife I was a stay-at-home mom for many years my husband had a very high power job and he needed me to be available for him when he was on travel for like sometimes a month at a time to all these countries and stuff so I made that decision with him and it was a good decision for us at the time and I'm glad I did. So around fourth grade my daughter was pretty independent. I was stuck at home because I had a really severe case of vertigo and I couldn't drive or go anywhere that much so I decided to finish the book that I started before she was born. <laughs> It was somewhat autobiographical. <laughs> I killed off the, the first husband because he was working at, in Virginia and in inside the Beltway, like my husband was for the Pentagon. And, um, and I just, I had fun. But I wrote that book and I sent it off and away it went. And I thought, you know, this is it. I'm going to start writing. I didn't know anything. I didn't know what I didn't know. I was rejected quite soundly because I didn't even know about the different lines that much. I didn't know there were rules for these category novels by the big publisher at the time. So but I also got a really great letter that helped me to determine that I could join an organization called Romance Writers of America and that gave me my first step into learning more about this crazy idea of writing romance and the craft of writing. The first main character I ever wrote about in a clear romance was in a book about a TV executive and a cooking a person who was a caterer and a cook, a baker. And uh, the Tycoon Sweet Temptation is what it ended up being called but it, it, it had multiple titles. So that's the first book I finished and the hero was a complete jerk. The heroine wasn't fully developed. She was, she was good, but she wasn't great. And yet that book, I revised it with the help of critique partners that I had up in Virginia. They told me they wouldn't read anything else I wrote until I re revised this one. So I did, it was hard work, but I did it. And that book actually won a lot of contests. It got great editor interest. It ended up going, to, I ended up working with an editor at my, my dream publishing company, one of the big five, and I was summarily rejected because ultimately the heroine was too two-dimensional and it hurt, but here we are. So that was my first book. Since I wrote that book, I have expanded and changed how I look at the romance genre in general. I've written alpha heroes that are super wealthy and rich in contemporary romances, and then I've also written sports heroes and military heroes and heroines that are military heroes and so I've really morphed a lot. I do like writing out of the box characters. They're my heroines are former marines, navy pilots, construction company owners. They just run the gamut. So it's a really it's just an ongoing process. You just keep changing how you write and what you write and what influences your writing changes as well. Mostly right now I write romantic suspense for Brotherhood Protectors, um, Al James's World, and I write for my Crush series, which is my new action adventure series, Covert Rescuers Under Undercover Shield. So that particular series is my main thrust, but I do want to write some contemporaries just to kind of do something a little 
less intricate because writing short romantic suspenses and writing short action adventure romances is not as easy as it looks because you've got to juggle a lot of parts and you've got to tie it all up within 50,000 words. It's actually easier to write longer, I think. I don't know. I never will. I, I trained myself to write no more than 45 to 50,000 words. It's just how I roll. Let's see. My worst, what I asked, what worst writing advice or feedback? Okay, so back in the day when I first started writing, I would enter romance writing chapter contests to get feedback on my writing and maybe figure out how to improve. It seemed like the closer I got to making that first sale, to getting the call, as we used to say, the meaner the comments got. So, I mean, I had one judge literally in all caps red yell at me because of my heroine's profession. I won't tell you what it is because I might publish it under a different name and I've never done that before. But at any rate, it was pretty subjective. And I also have been a contest coordinator and a contest judge and in no way, shape or form would I ever, ever do all caps in red yelling at a writer who's trying to learn and grow. So that was pretty yucky. The, the, the biggest disappointment I had really was in 2013 when I learned that this big publisher that I dreamed to write for, well, they didn't want my story. They loved, they liked the writing in general, but there was just a lot to, a lot that I still needed to learn. And that hurt really bad, I'm not gonna lie. I had a pretty good cry over that one. And um, then I reread the letter and I used it to study other craft books, to really delve into what I needed to do and develop my own course, How Opposites Attract, Plotting the Emotional Turning Points of the Romance Novel, which I've actually shared on this channel. I've shared the rejection story on this channel. I'll, I'll put the links in the description, but basically, it was rough, that was rough. And then a year later, oh no, that was in 2012, and then 2013, I was a contest coordinator and I got to you know, communicate with different editors and agents and stuff because that's what you, you try to get your stuff in front of an editor or an agent. And my first ever editor was one of the judges for the final round. And so when I learned what she was looking for, I thought, hmm, I've got a book. So I asked, I asked the people, the president of our local chapter, if I could talk, you know, contact this editor. And she said, yes. And then I went about and, and said, hey, I've got this book, da, da, da. I was only halfway finished it, but <laughs> then it was a scramble and I finished it and I sent it. And after I sent the first three chapters, she wanted to see the rest of it. So I sent her the rest of it and within a week of my sending the story i got an email would you how are you with working with a team are you this i got it up basically i got an email the call from from a smaller publisher but it ended up being a really good fit for me i loved working with the editors there and it was really nice to to get that call anyway so that was the that's a little bit of a story into my my journey so that actually was the mavericks red hot reunion which is now going to come out as Red Hot Reunion because I got the right, rights back to the story. Um, things don't always work out the way you think they will when you get when you sell. It's just another step in the process and the publishing world has changed a lot, especially in romance. I don't know how it is with the other genres, but I know that, that in the publishing romance world, indie has really overtaken everything. My superpower, what part of the writing process do I feel is my greatest strength? Mm, well, I like to say now that I'm pretty decent at character development and coming up with a three-dimensional character. Um, I spend a lot of time doing pre-writing and planning and there are times when I'll be brainstorming with one of my critique partners and they'll say, well, what about if he does this or if he does that? I'm like, no, he, he would never do that because when his father was an alcoholic, so this man doesn't drink, his body is a temple to him. Like he's a sports, he's an athlete, but he eats really lousy food. He just, so I'll know the characters well enough to know what they can and cannot do with habits and things like that. So I really enjoy delving into the character development. And I also think I'm a better editor than I am a first drafter. So I love the pre-writing stage, developing the ideas for the story. I love the I love the revision process because that's when the story is really reborn for me. So though I, I sometimes have like four or five, maybe six revisions before I feel like it's good enough to send to the next editor because I really feel like the final editor because I really feel like that's just how I roll. I write I write, I have to write the story to know the story. And sometimes the story doesn't really reveal itself, even with all my planning and, oh, I might do a little outline. 
it just it won't I won't be able to write it until I actually see the whole big picture I need to be able to revise it so that's really probably my greatest strength and the kryptonite mm, the weakest part of my process what is it it's conflict I have a really hard time coming up with a conflict that why these two people cannot be together. Now, writing romantic suspense helps me a little bit because I at least have external things that are happening that are out of, you know, that force these people together and tear them apart. But it's still a romance. And the emotional journey is more important to the ultimate conclusion than the external journey, if you will. So for me, coming up with a believable reason for why these two people are going to walk away from each other towards the end and have their big black moment or their breakup, it's hard. I usually figure that out after I get my notes back from my various different editing partners and critique partners and then I'm like, oh, okay, so now let's delve into it a little bit more. So my weapon of choice, what do I use for my writing that I rely on a lot? Um, Scrivener. I have a, I bought a Mac years ago in 2009. I converted over to a MacBook because I heard about this Scrivener program and I wanted it and it works perfectly for the way my mind kind of works. The, I, I kind of go back and forth between scenes. I like dropping scene cards in. I like being able to go pull out and then pull back in again. I do everything in Scrivener. I do all my pre-writing, all my character development. I have my own novel template. I do, uh, the first draft is built completely in Scrivener. I keep series, like, like the first three books for Crush are in one Scrivener program. And then the next three books are gonna be in another one, but I just, I can easily move elements over, like my research, everything is in there. So I'm 100% Scrivener, Scrivener, Scrivener. Love it. I will put a link to the, the website if you are interested in using it for your own writing. My trusted sidekick. Who's with me when when I'm writing? Well, that would be right now, Catador Tonks, or, or as we lovingly call her, Lil Shit or Tonks. She was born of a feral cat in 2011, right around the time I had to say goodbye to my original companion, which was the Dowager Feline Clancy. Those of you who have, been, who have known me for a long time, knew of DFC. We wrote, I wrote about DFC a lot in my blog that I had years and, years and years ago. She was a great cat. She was on my lap every day when I wrote. Tonks isn't really a lap cat. Tonks is a more of a, I just wanna be in the same room as you. So she'll come snuggle up behind me on the chair or she'll sit in the window. I have to keep the window open next to my chair where I'm writing. She wants to be like in the room with me. She follows me everywhere, but she doesn't want to actually be in my lap. She's just not a lap cat. She's very cute though, and she's a lot of fun and she's got a very fun personality and I enjoy her tremendously. She really brought me out of a really sad, sad, saying goodbye to my cat time because Clancy and I grew up together. I had Clancy before I had my daughter and I still I still sometimes feel sad about having to say goodbye to her. You know, our pets are like children to us. They're part of our family. So that right now it's Tonks. Tonks is my companion and I love her. Zero to hero. What success did I imagine for myself? And is where I am my destination? If not, how has the dream evolved over the years? Okay, so first of all, I didn't get that big publisher I wanted. It wasn't gonna happen. But you know, it wasn't going to happen for a reason. I'm too, I write too out of the box. I'm, I don't like being stuck into certain confines. Like you have to meet these benchmarks for this particular line in our, in our publishing house, whether it's, you know, cowboys or Americana or alpha rich heroes or you name it you we got you got to follow these certain steps so I that was a, it was a disappointment but then I got the other call which worked out really well I thought I would be writing longer for for this particular publishing company I loved my editor but things change very quickly in the publishing industry especially in romance like there's a lot of turnover and a lot of a lot of new things coming up and it just wasn't going to work out for me. Yeah, you know, like it just, it wasn't going to last forever. And that was kind of like the biggest disappointment to me that I had this envisioned of, this vision of being nurtured in my career and as I move forward. And I was, so I was looking forward to that process, but unfortunately that isn't really how it is. At least it wasn't for me. And so I ended up 
deciding to go all indie because at the same time that I sold indie independent publishing self-publishing particularly in the romance world was exploding and in fact 2015 the gold rush crashed so of course I sold a year before the gold crush the gold rush app got crashed and so I kind of I didn't have enough books out. I had like three books out in two years. That's not enough to gain any traction. So I just decided to start working harder on my own and having control over when I published, the deadlines, because sometimes you will wait like months before you get your revisions from the editor at the publishing house. And it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do? If I've got another book in this series, I can't really write it until I know what I have to fix in this book and da 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 da. So I wanted to have more control. I'm a little bit of a control freak. I am very much an organized creative. I'm a Capricorn and I'm on the cusp of Capricorn Aquarius. My daughter thinks it's all hokey pokey, but I know that I am an organized creative and I need structure and I need to know that when things are gonna happen and I'm willing to be flexible about things, but I needed to have control over my schedule. A lot of stuff has happened. So, um, you know, even if the money isn't great all the time and it's not great all the time, I mean, I would have been happy to make a little bit of money, <laughs> but um, my other kryptonite is I suck at marketing. So <laughs> I just have to hope and pray that uh, things will get better for me that way. I mean, I am making money, but not what I thought I would make. So what is my definition of success? Well. My definition of success is different than maybe some people. I'm doing something I love. I'm also editing other people's work and I love doing that. I love developing stories. I love the people I have met along the way. I love encouraging other people in their journey. If this was only for the money, I'd have stopped before I even started because there was no money for years. I wrote for like, I was trying to get published from 2000 and Three, 2005 was when I first wrote my finished my first book and got rejected and I didn't sell until 2013 so eight years later and I can't tell you how much writing and learning and craft classes I took and courses and workshops and conferences and times I pitched to editors and agents and I was getting closer 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 but no cigar no cigar no cigar it was not for the money. <laughs> I wouldn't, why was I doing this to myself? I was trying to follow the traditional path to, to success and that didn't work really 100%, but it sort of worked. And then I went to Indy when it kind of went crazy busy and that's okay because I'm happy. I love doing what I do. I love being a part of the writing community. I love my author friends. I love my writer friends. I love being in the community. So I guess my definition of success is I'm doing something I love and I'm not putting any earthly measurement on what the, what the results are. Because if I did that, then I wouldn't have any joy and I need joy and I have hope. And so I write my stories and if I can touch somebody's lives with my stories and get a few readers, and I can make a difference in some people's lives, then I feel like I'm a success. Like money isn't the only thing, it is something. And I, you know, I'm not saying I don't want money, but it's not the only thing that drives me, it never has. But the writing has given me that intellectual creative outlet that I desperately need. So being curious and being someone who likes to explore new things and being someone who gets bored easily if it's not challenging enough, I'm in the perfect industry because this is always going to challenge me. It's gonna challenge me until I'm uh, six feet under, basically. Okay, so remember my name, fame. What authors helped you realize your interest or passion for writing? What books helped shape your writing style, genre of choice, taste? So there are so many authors in the romance publishing industry that have given to me and to countless other aspiring authors throughout the time that I have been writing. I can't even name them all. I've been very fortunate to be part of the Romance Writers of America for many, many years. I've been a member of local chapters where I've had um, been able to participate in learning more about the craft, met other authors who were published, not published. Quite frankly, the biggest help I had was from a lady, uh, an author, Melanie Milburn, who I met I'd been reading her books and I met her at a, a big national conference, our annual national conference, and I was at a book signing with her and I told her I'd gotten this, you know, I'd just finaled and gotten these requests and that, you know, it was really hard. And she said, well, send me your book. And I was floored. Like, send me the first three chapters. And I was floored. 
And I was like, okay. So I, I held off sending to her because I, I hate feeling like I'm using people. I know that she didn't think, I just don't like, that's just not a really good place for me. I don't want people to think that I'm being nice to them because I want something from them. That's just not how I roll. I've never been that way. So I, it was hard for me to make that first step to send her those chapters, but I finally did. And she wrote me back and said, usually she does like a critique, the whole nine yards, but until she read mine, she loved the story. She was like, don't even think about it. Just, I've talked to my editor at this big publishing house, send your story. Now, unfortunately, the story was set in the United States of America. So it wasn't going to fly with this publisher's uh, particular category because it was all, you know, foreign alpha heroes from like Greece and Italy. And I sent the other book, and we worked on that and then it didn't fly either. But Melanie's letter definitely gave me the lift I needed at a time when I was getting really close to saying, I don't know if I wanna do this anymore because I'm not getting anywhere. Maybe I suck, so whatever. But that gave me hope. And so she was the biggest influencer as far as that's concerned. But before that, it was like not even just published authors. I mean, my critique partners throughout the years, uh, different contests that I've entered where I've met some of the people that have judged me and given me good, valuable insight. Not every contest judges me. Most of them are pretty much wanting you to help you succeed. So I've had some really good advice from different contests that I've entered. And also to me, when you are writing, when you, before you publish, it's good to make sure that you have a, a tribe that you can count on because after you're published people will want it's 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 a whole different world after you're published and you need to know who your true friends are and i believe i have a really good tribe of people in my world not all of them are published authors but all of them care about me and my success and i care about them and their success and we we support each other in whatever way we can uh, and we are there for each other and so i'm really blessed that way i've got my two critique partners particularly carmen falcone and pam montavani pam and i've been working together since 2011 and uh, I actually met her in 2009, the year that I finaled in the Maggies, which is one of the contests from Georgia Romance Writers of America. And we hit it off immediately. She's a great girl and I, I love her to bits. For books, there's a lot of books that I have read over the years. GMC, Goal Motivation Conflict by Deb Dixon is a, you like you gotta have that on your bookshelf or in your Kindle or whatever, because it is really the benchmark. Uh, Donald Moss writing the breakout novel. I really like that book. And uh, Stephen King on writing. Anything that James Scott Bell has written about writing, pick it up and read it. I really love is The Art of War for Writers, which is snippets from his different books. But I've got his books on revision and on plotting and you know, I, I like to bring them out every once in a while. And I also really like Michael Haig. Uh, he's a storytelling mastery. He's really good too. Uh, again, just there's so many resources out there that you can go to. And I actually did do a little talk about my uh, favorite books. So I'll drop a link to that video in my description for you. And you can take a look at that. My writing has undergone a lot of changes. I've gone from contemporary romance to romantic suspense to action adventure romance to back to contemporary. I mean, I like to explore new ideas and play around with different things. So for me, writing is playing, playing is writing. So not everybody looks at it that way, but that's how I roll. Marvel versus DC, comparison is dangerous. How has comparing your author journey to others dismantled or helped my career? Any advice to overcome this? Well, I have this little mantra. The only author I need to uh, compare myself to is the author I was yesterday and the author I was the day before yesterday because I cannot be anybody but Christine Glover. And I'm never gonna be Nora Roberts or Lisa Kleypas or Pam Montavani or Carmen Falcone or Lynn Ray Harris or the list goes on and on and on, Marie Force. They're all wonderful writers too. And they write their own way. They have their own writing voices. I can only improve upon myself. And to me, if you, if you get into the comparison game, then the jealousy thing comes into play. And there's just no reason to be jealous. I mean, it's just a negative emotion and it's just gonna drain your creativity and it's going to drain your ability to write stories. And the goal is to write my stories and to make them as good as I can make them and every day is a challenge. So I, I don't 
I try very hard not to compare. I mean, like sure, sometimes you'll see someone doing better than you, but then at the end of the day, you really don't know what's happening in their worlds that might be not good because nobody's life is perfect. And so sometimes what you see on the outside isn't really what you see on the inside. Like that everybody has problems, everybody has issues. Like, And the, the truth is we're not just writers and authors, we're people and we have to look at the big picture. So my only thing is because I have that attitude, I kind of don't bow down to any man. Like I don't think that just because you're big in your corner of the world that you deserve me to go, you're so great. Like I have respect, but I don't feel like I'm lower than somebody else because I didn't get the same sales figures or anything like that. I'm doing my thing, I'm writing my books and I'm having fun. Again, writing is playing, playing is writing. Obligatory love interest. Looking back on my earliest projects, which genres have you grown to love or hate? Well, I've always written some form of romance. I love romance and that's what I want to write. I am tickling, a noodling an idea for a woman's fiction. A couple of my writing friends were like, you should make that into a screenplay. And I'm like, well, that would be a challenge since I've never written one of those before. So I might have to explore that idea because then I wouldn't have to worry about all the narrative and exposition and da da da. But it's, it's, a, it's a women's fiction idea that I, I think has some legs, but we'll see. Uh, that's about the only way other place I would probably go. I like to write short and women's fiction. I think this one will be a bit longer. So there's that. So I like to write short and women's fiction will be a bit longer. I really do love my new series. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I know that not all of it is probable because I've got this secret agency set uh, with wineries as the secret headquarters and I've got this bizarro background. It's sort of like John Wick meets the Avengers meets wineries <laughs> and I'm playing around with some different ideas with that so again you know like that's something I really want to invest my time in and I don't pivot really quickly I've I never have been able to pivot super fast I'm I'm like again very methodical and I like to have like my boundaries sort of set so I don't go from one genre subgenre to another subgenre very easily I've flirted with writing some short shorter stories under a pen name, but I haven't really actually gotten down to doing it, mainly because it's first person and there's, I don't know if I can do it. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if I wanna go that route. So, but basically that's where I'm at. Action adventure, romantic suspense and contemporary romance, and maybe I might sprinkle in a women's fiction. Arch nemesis, what are the most common excuses you've given yourself or outside forces you've overcome that have prevented you from writing your story or crushed your confidence? Well, I have had a lot of personal life happenings over the last two years. So that's sucked up a lot of my time. We moved across the country, we ran two households. The, my daughter needed me for some um, support emotionally. Uh, she's a great girl, she's super smart. She's got an awesome job and even through the pandemic, we've been really fortunate. However, however, she's not, you know, she, she's our only child and we wanted to get closer to her. Things happen a little faster than we expected. However, we, made the right choice because we got here a year, we got this house a year before we were planning on even looking and then the pandemic happened. So we were able to be here for her during one of her greatest losses, which was her beloved Pat um, having to go mischief. And that was super hard. She was 19 and a half years old. So that was a tough one for all of us, especially for her. Still a little sad about it. And then just, you know, we've just been juggling a lot. My husband's working from home here. I'm working from home. She's working from home here. So I just decided I'm just gonna give myself a weekends off, focus on the things that I need to focus on for the household and the family, cause that's just easier for me and give myself a break every once in a while. And then when Monday comes, I write and I do other things. The other thing is my truest biggest issue is I suck at Facebook ads. I suck at developing them. I suck at all of it and I hate them. I hate doing them. So I finally have admitted defeat and I've hired someone to help me with that. So hopefully that will help me overcome that problem and maybe I'll learn something from this lady and she seems pretty smart and I don't wanna look at analytics and numbers and different things like that. So I'm happy to pay someone right now to do that for me. Superhero name. I don't have a pen name. I briefly thought about doing a, uh, something under a pen name that's still kind of really far, far in the back recesses of my brain. I love writing romance. I love my name being on the cover. I am proud of being a romance author. I, I love writing the stories and I love sharing them. 
But then I don't have like a job where it could be impacted negatively if people knew I was a romance author. So like if you're in education, maybe you don't want people to know that because you know, it's personal, it's private. Or if you're like in, in a capacity of a job where really it wouldn't be cool if people, everybody knew that you were writing sexy romance stories or something. So for me, I just had that luxury of not having a real job other than, you know, mom and wife and friend and daughter and sister and doing the things that I've done over the years to help out in the schools when my daughter was in a younger child. And so basically I don't have a pen name, but it's okay if you do, cause I might take one too. So now for the Avengers assembly, I need to tag a, somebody to do one of these as well. And I don't know a lot of romance authors on YouTube. I do know of one author, her name is Jody Linton. She's written romances and now she's writing cozy mysteries. She has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna put her in the link. I'm gonna let her know that I have tagged her to do her author origin story. Thanks for watching. If you have anything that you want to share with me about your writing journey, I would really like to learn more about it. If you have any suggestions for books to read that would improve my craft, I would love to hear that as well. I hope you are doing well, that you are safe, that you are healthy, that all is good in your world. And I'm really happy to be on this channel with you. If you like my, my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to be a part of my little YouTube world that I'm creating very slowly, you can subscribe to my channel. I try to keep these a little shorter. This one went ran a little long, but it was fun doing it. So I'm happy I did it. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.